This is war map. Avdiivka has fallen. Ukrainian command announced withdrawal of troops. The Ukrainian army is retreating to more advantageous positions. In Avdivka, said Dmitry Likovy, speaker of the Tavria Armed Forces of Ukraine Group. In Avdivka, a maneuver is taking place where our units are withdrawing to more advantageous positions. Supplies to Avdivka and evacuation from there are difficult. But a reserve logistics artery, prepared in advance, is being used, Likovy said on the Ukrainian telethon. Let us recall that the day before, the main logistics artery of the Ukrainian armed forces between the southern and northern parts of Adyevka was cut off, and Russian units continued to build on their success, trying to encircle the defensive positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in the south. This happened over a period of a couple of days, as Russian forces were able to create two boilers in Adyevka, the first boiler formed around the Ukrainian position of the old air defense base. Today images from the bases send Ukrainian media and supporters into a frenzy. As only back in December Zelensky visited the site, today a Russian flag is now unfurled at the same location. So what exactly happened to lead to this? Before the Ukrainian army withdrawal, the Ukrainian command was asked to surrender and avoid losses of personnel. In return, a safe corridor was proposed to reach RF rear and guarantee the preservation of lives. But there was no answer. Later Ukrainian media started to announce the withdrawal. In Avdivka, our units are partially retreating to more advantageous positions the speaker of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Tauride direction. The 3rd Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, aka Azov, deployed to the Avdivka area, spoke of Avdivka Hell. Avdivsky Hell. The 3rd Separate Assault Brigade confirmed that it was urgently deployed to reinforce Ukrainian troops in the Avdiivka region. The situation in the city is extremely critical at the time of the brigade's establishment, said a statement on the brigade's official telegram channel. In addition, they, Azovites, confirmed the encirclement of their positions and declared that they would have to fight 360 degrees. Meanwhile, RF fighters hoisted the Russian flag near the Abbey of Castile, where Zelensky took a photo a month ago. The advance units of the Russian army planted RF flag as they advanced into the city, celebrating their new successes during the assault on the city. The 1st Slavic Brigade raised the Russian flag over the main fortress of the Ukrainian armed forces in the south of Avdivka, the Zenit fortified area. In the south of Avdivka, RF fighters completed the encirclement and capture of the powerful Zenit fortified area with flank maneuvers. The most important defense center fell the air defense base in the southwest near Avdivka, which was turned by the Ukrainian armed forces into a real fortress with underground fortifications filled with thick concrete. This fortified area could have shackled RF offensive, wedging into Russian positions and preventing the assault on Avdivka from this direction. And so, during a competent operation, the fighters of the 1st Slaviansky knocked out the AFU, taking this fortress of the armed forces of Ukraine. Meanwhile, in Avdivka, hell is worse than Bakhmut. The Russians are pushing with huge forces. By the time the 3rd assault unit entered, not a single intact prepared position remained there stated Azov militants. Deputy commander of the 3rd Special Brigade, formerly Azov. Our third assault carries out combat missions in conditions that were difficult even for us to imagine. The confrontation is not just with superior enemy forces there are a huge number of enemies, coming from all sides. The battles in Avdivka are many times more hellish than the hottest battles of this phase of the war, which were in Bakhmut. In general, the situation is very reminiscent of the Bakhmut defensive operation when the infantry of the 3rd assault was forced to take up defensive positions immediately from the march. Moreover, as last year, not a single position was prepared, because at the time of entry those GPs that were held by adjacent have already been lost or destroyed, says the AFU engineer. AFU analysts from DS consider the transfer of an assault unit to the operational environment to strengthen defensive actions extremely strange and they note that such a decision was made before the change of commander-in-chief, so this rotation should not be considered Sersky's idea. Due to the appearance of information in the media about the transfer of the 3rd Brigade to Avdivka, before the official announcement, 
the number of missile attacks on the rear cities of the Donetsk region, where, according to the Russian Federation, the Troika could be located, increased. In addition to Zenit, the Ukrainian army is reported to have abandoned the neighboring Cheburashka and its easternmost position at the Donetsk Filtration Station, DFS. If the data is confirmed, it means that the defense of the southern sector of Avdiivka continues to fall apart after the looming threat of encirclement. It seems that the Ukrainian armed forces are retreating to the high-rise buildings of the 9th Micro District and to the territory of Koksikim, the coke plant, where they will continue to hold positions for now. This is the end. There is now a Russian flag at the place where Zelensky took a selfie in Avdiivka at the end of December. German journalist Julian Rock confirms the difficult situation of the Ukrainian armed forces in Avdiivka. The city is now tactically surrounded by Russia. The biggest challenge for Ukrainians will be to get out of there alive. The balance of forces near Avdiivka is 1 to 7. The situation is critical. Speaker of the 3rd Specialized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces The officers of the Best Assault Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Azov, transferred to the Inferno continue to make panicky statements. Some units work with us at 360 degrees, that is, the situation is really difficult, and one of the elements is that the enemy can hit almost completely at 360 degrees in some areas. This does not mean that we are completely surrounded in these areas, but it does mean that they can hit us, said Alexander Borodin. Meanwhile, the armed forces of Ukraine have already begun a partial withdrawal from Avdiivka. Considering the surrender of the city to the Russian army only a matter of time, Washington Post. The pilot of the drone, Alpha, with the call sign, Vitamin, from Avdiivka told WP that the Russians are seeking to surround the Avdiivka coke plant, which has become the main base of the armed forces of Ukraine in the city. Storming a coke plant will be very difficult and probably makes no sense. They'll try to get around him and surround him, and that's it our forces will be forced to retreat. The Russians are now trying to put pressure on the right flank of the coke plant, and they are succeeding. Capturing Avdiivka would mark Moscow's most significant military victory since the failure of a Ukrainian counteroffensive last year, and would be the clearest sign yet that Russian forces are regaining the initiative as Kiev lacks soldiers, weapons, ammunition, morale and money, writes the Washington Post. Although, a complete withdrawal of troops from Avdiivka now seems likely. During the reporter's trip to the city, fresh forces from the assault brigades were deployed there to help repel Russian attacks and continue the defense of Avdiivka. The cauldron around Avdiivka is closing. Part of the Ukrainian armed forces' forces are already surrounded. The analytical resource DS, working for the Ukrainian armed forces, publishes a new map and comments on the loss of the Zenit and Cheburashka defenders. Recently, the Russians have been actively attacking in this area. In recent days, the positions there were almost completely surrounded. Today, the main forces retreated from their positions, but not everyone managed to get out, so not everything is as happy as others are trying to make it look like. The DS writes, without reporting their fate. And this is exactly what is happening to the AFU soldiers who couldn't leave. In a recorded phone call, one of AFU contacted his mother letting her know what is fated. There are up to 6,000 AFU in the operational environment. They are trying to escape across the fields in the direction of Lastikino. RF artillery, rocket launchers and cast iron are flying non-stop. It will be a long night. As the AFU are retreating they are being bombarded by Russian artillery and aviation. Since the start of the retreat around 10 FAB bomb have been dropped on positions of Ukrainian groups. 
one of the Russian soldiers writes, The cauldron is closed. Many who run through the forests, through the fields, remain in the forests and fields. Victory does not work out. The boys report that they are taking house after house. Many houses are destroyed. Not all crests are taken from the basements, and there is nowhere to take them. Now there will be fairy tales that Avdivka is an unnecessary city, that our troops are exhausted, there are losses there are more of us, but this is not so, and so on and so forth. Crests admit it, there will be no victory. This is confirmed by Ukrainian command as well. The road to Avdivka is strewn with our corpses. A few officer told how they were left to die by the command and died when they fled from the air defense base. 110th Brigade, 1st Battalion, 2nd Company. Fortified Area, HF, Zenith. Preservation of soldiers, removal of weapons and equipment, mining and burning of those remains that we call positions. It would be nice, but no. Nobody likes unpopular decisions. The withdrawal of soldiers, no, another thing, heroic defense. You can get a promotion for this. There were two attempts to exit. On the first night, February 14th, the first ten left, we had to join the battle. The artillery was already aimed. Only three wounded returned. The last one was evacuated in the morning. Me and three others carried him. And the day is not the time for movement. And the natural result, from one wounded, there were four more of us. And I was also very lucky I did not lose my mobility, but only received the Joker's smile. Okay. New day, new challenge. New groups were formed. I didn't delve into it. They said an infantry fighting vehicle would come for the wounded. Relaxed? Groups departed, one after another. Visibility is zero. It was stupid survival. A kilometer across the field. And a bunch of blind people driven by a drone. Russian artillery. The road to Avdivka is strewn with our corpses. I didn't stay to wait for the evacuation. I took the group and went into the unknown. They covered me. Fuck the group. But in the end I got to the point. The first groups died when faced with the enemy. The following groups took a detour. This allowed the lucky ones to get out. The evacuation did not arrive. The last group left the bunker. And this dialogue on the walkie-talkie hurt our souls. Wounded. What? There will be no evacuation. Commander, no, it won't, leave three hundred, injured, and burn everything. He didn't know that he was talking to a wounded man. At least six people left. And it was also difficult to read their chat messages and signal. Their despair and doom. This will always remain with us. And now, after all the horrors, completely exhausted, wounded and with a minimum of things, we are in Avdivka, but ready to leave. The command is dragging its feet further. And they are even ready to bring ammunition and supplies, but also leave us to die. 